Mr. David Trachtenberg served on the EMP Commission staff. Formerly, he was Pr Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Policy, where his office initiated successful efforts to restructure NATO and control proliferation through the Proliferation Security Initiative. Mr. Trachtenberg also served as professional staff on the House Armed Services Committee for, with responsibilities for policy and missile defense and nuclear strategy. The most significant financial transactions are performed and recorded electronically. I came up to New York yesterday, and before, before I got on a plane and came to New York, I did several things. I went, I went to dinner the night before, and I paid my bill with a credit card. Uh, I went home after dinner, and I paid my mortgage and my utility bills online. And on the way to the airport yesterday, I stopped at an ATM machine to withdraw some cash. Now, the reason I was able to do that, and I suspect many of you do similar types of financial transactions, the reason we're able to do that is because of information technology and information networks which make such electronic banking and financial transactions possible. Virtually all transactions involving banks and other financial institutions happen electronically, and virtually all record keeping of financial transactions is stored electronically. The trend in this country is toward ever more sophisticated and powerful electronic systems capable of an ever increasing volume of business. However, like other infrastructures, the increasing dependence of the United States on an electronic economy increases the vulnerability of the banking and financial infrastructure to the effects of electromagnetic pulse. Now, of course, the banking industry also relies on and is interdependent with other critical infrastructures like power and telecommunications, which Commissioner Herman just spoke about, which are also vulnerable to EMP. So the impact of a disruption to the computer, electronic, power, and telecommunications networks that are essential to the functioning of our financial infrastructure would clearly be devastating. It would not only affect individual depositors and investors like you and me, but major banks, including the entire Federal Reserve System, investment companies, financial service utilities, and third third-party processing companies. The main problem, and, and if you take nothing else away from this conference, uh, I, I think the main conclusion that you need to go come away with is that there is an overwhelming interdependence between all of these critical national infrastructures. Now many times infrastructure failures occur individually. A geomagnetic storm, for example, may disrupt communications. It may, it may have little effect, immediate effect, on other infrastructures. Uh, a local explosion at a transformer site in the community may, uh, may shut down the electric power grid, for, uh, causing a temporary blackout for a short period of time. However, unlike other types of threats, EMP has the potential, as, you, as you've heard, to cause a cascading failure of multiple infrastructures which again is another reason why an EMP attack can appear so attractive to a potential aggressor. Like many businesses, banking and financial institutions have continuity of operations plans to deal with temporary disruptions in services. Yet those continuity plans tend to focus on ensuring the functioning of the financial sector against contingencies such as short-term power outages, or cyber terrorist threats, uh, hackers using computers, computer-based attacks, things of that nature. Uh, they, they do not tend to focus on dealing with recovering from or dealing with the effects of an EMP attack. Such an attack would pose a simultaneous and widespread threat that could be essentially fatal to the financial infrastructure of the country. Now, the EMP Commission found that the vast majority of electronic systems supporting the country's financial infrastructure have never been tested, much less hardened, against EMP effects. Despite the robustness 
of the financial infrastructure against a wide range of threats, it simply was not designed to withstand an EMP attack. Indeed, the Commission found that the highly sophisticated electronic technologies that make the modern financial infrastructure possible are the components most vulnerable to the effects of electromagnetic pulse. Consequently, an EMP attack could cripple the operation of the U.S. economy. And while the financial infrastructure ha has experienced dealing with relatively short-term disruptions caused by natural or man-made events, the longer-term consequences of EMP could dwarf those experiences, that history. Think of it for a minute. Normal business transactions could not occur. Loans could not be made. Wealth would become inaccessible. Credit cards would become useless. The overall impact on our daily lives could be overwhelming. The Commission concluded that in the event of an EMP attack, and I'll quote from the Commission's report, the alternative to a disrupted electronic economy may not be reversion to a 19th century cash economy, but reversion to an earlier economy based on barter. Barter. Think about that. That's an, an immensely sobering thought. Even a partial or small-scale disruption of the financial infrastructure could bring about a major economic crisis. The economic health of the nation, as we've been told many times before, is dependent to a large degree on consumer confidence. And the inability of people to access their money from ATM machines or to make electronic transfers or, or uh, to access their, uh, their funds from savings institutions could undermine that confidence. Now, because of this, the Commission made several recommendations intended to help secure the financial services industry from an electromagnetic pulse threat. And these include, for example, having the Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Reserve Bank, and the Department of the Treasury develop contingency plans to survive and recover key financial systems promptly from an EMP attack. It sounds like common sense, but it's worth, it's worth emphasizing. Having the federal government work with the private sector to ensure the protection and effective recovery of essential financial records and services infrastructure systems from all deliberate adverse events, including EMP attack. Expanding implementation of the recommendations in 2003 that were made for countering sabotage and cyber threats, recommendations made by the Department of Transportation, the Federal Reserve Board, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, to include an expeditious recovery from EMP attack. Now, these recommendations can be found in more detail in the Commission's 2008 report. It's also available online, as uh, I'm sure you're aware. 